life is so wonderful compared to what it was in this place. I can't even believe I actually get to be where I am now. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're examining sad and horrific personal secrets about famous child stars. And to be going through that court situation and have an open court case and have everybody look at it. Hillary Duff. Lizzy, that's ridiculous, honey. You're not fat. You're perfect. Mom, I'm talking about a friend here, remember? The recipient of seven Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards, Hillary Duff was a major teen idol of the early 2000s, known primarily for her role as Lizzie McGuire. Unfortunately, the attention this role brought her resulted in an eating disorder. They said things before, you know, like, oh my gosh, she's gained weight, and then yeah. I lose weight, and then it's, oh my gosh, she's lost too much weight. Duff has opened up to various publications about her flawed relationship with food, claiming that the pressures of fame and an unhealthy approach to celebrity caused her to develop unhealthy eating habits as a teenager. In one interview with E! News, Duff even claims her, quote, hands would cramp up a lot owing to malnutrition. I begged for acting classes. I... Mm -hmm. You know, beg to go to, like, random cattle calls where there's, like, 500 kids. And you kids. lived in Texas, right? Yeah. Like Number five, Daniel Radcliffe. When I, when I think of, like, uh, yeah, like, the, the sort of chaos I used to invite into my life, um, I'm like, ah, I'm, I'm really much happier now. In the decades since ending his historic run as Harry Potter, Daniel Radcliffe has spoken about some of the issues he faced as a young star of the franchise. The pressure of being one of the biggest child stars in the world eventually got to him. As Radcliffe reached a legal drinking age, he acknowledged in interviews that he began leaning more on alcohol to deal with being in the spotlight. In my case, the quickest way of forgetting about the fact that you were being watched was to get very drunk. Um, and then as you get very drunk, you become aware that, oh, people are watching more now because now I'm getting very drunk. He also said that his habits began to affect his work on the films. As the franchise wrapped up, Radcliffe worked hard to get and stay sober. Today, Radcliffe credits staying well-adjusted in the spotlight to surrounding himself with positive influences. Now we're about a year and a half later, and it's and my life has been has turned around uh, immeasurably. It's a wonderful thing. Allison Porter. Hell, I'd rather sing for my supper than sit in the parking lot. They sing to all holy heaven. While she's now known for her music, Alison Porter began her career in movies as a young child. Perhaps her most famous role is that of Curly Sue in the John Hughes film of the same name, which was released when Porter was just 10 years old. So find yourself somebody to love. This was followed by a tumultuous period involving drugs and alcohol. In 2014, Porter wrote a blog post opening up about her substance use, with insinuations towards marijuana and Xanax. She eventually had a moment of clarity and sought professional help. She became abstinent from drugs in 2007 at the age of 26 and has remained so ever since. I, I just, I made a call to my mom and another person who was sober and they helped me. Joe Jonas. The Jonas Brothers are an iconic piece of late 2000s pop culture, the squeaky clean cute boys behind various Disney projects and popular songs. But now they're all grown up, and some are voicing their chagrin at being corporate puppets. Joe in particular has made his displeasure known, publishing a scathing op-ed through Vulture in 2013. He speaks about his time with Disney and how he was forced to project an innocent image while working on projects he didn't even like. Wow, you really get into your work. I'm Shane. But I'm sure even the kitchen help knows that. Furthermore, it began to affect his personal life, especially his relationship with Demi Lovato. Lovato was battling her own demons, but an unhappy Jonas felt obligated to remain in the relationship for the sake of appearances. I heard this girl singing, and it kind of reminded me of the music that I liked. So I started playing around with some chords, and I know it's not finished, but... No. You know, no, oh, it's good. Selena Gomez. I was told I had to join this club or get suspended. <gasps> oh, come on, most of you know me, that's not a shocker. Another Disney veteran, another person suffocated by its pressures. Gomez has been very open about her troubled relationship with the company, even reporting on the Zach Sang show that she, quote, hated most of her upbringing. Being able to address things that's happening, because they're, they're kids who don't even know they're in pain. This included the negative pressures of fame, unwanted public attention, and having to move away from home at a young age. Gomez showed a particularly vulnerable side in the 2022 documentary My Mind and Me, in which she opened up about her struggles with mental health. 
Gomez says that she's doing better now thanks to friends and therapy. Oh, I, I would want nothing more than to not be my past and it comes back. Lelaine. We return to the Lizzie McGuire universe for Lelaine, who played Lizzie's best friend Miranda Sanchez. However, her heart wasn't really in the show, and she left before its conclusion to focus on other creative pursuits. Want some of my french fries? Why don't they just slap a big sign on this school that says loser farm and be done with it? She did not appear in the final six episodes of the show, nor did she star in the 2003 movie. Unfortunately, this preceded what Lelaine calls her, quote, dark years. This included a period of serious substance use, and she was arrested in 2007 on a felony possession of methamphetamine. Thankfully, she eventually sought help and turned her life around. Were you aware that you were like a role model when you were on the show? Uh, I think at that age, like maybe it was said, of course, but uh -huh. I don't think you truly understand. Well, I didn't truly understand what that meant. Shirley Temple. I've got it. Wee Willy Winky. Wee Willy Winky? <laughs> <laughs> Was he a friend of yours? Kids today will probably know Shirley Temple as that yummy drink you get at restaurants, not knowing about who was once the biggest child star on the planet, nay, maybe the biggest movie star, period. Unfortunately, this caused Temple to be the subject of some bizarre treatment. Will you help me out, Shirley? I need you to go over and apologize. I didn't do anything wrong. The child star required intensive dental work to hide the natural gaps in her teeth, and fans persistently yanked on her hair hoping to expose a wig. They were left disappointed, and she was left in pain. Worst of all was a horrific casting couch experience that she was subjected to in 1940, the details of which are recounted in her memoir, Child Star. I sat on so many laps, it's a wonder I ever learned to walk. <laughs> Judy Garland. I don't like this forest. It's, it's dark and creepy. Another screen icon of the golden age, Judy Garland achieved enormous popularity, but it came at the expense of her physical and mental health. Garland's story is one of the most tragic in Hollywood, a widespread cautionary tale about the dangers of stardom and perfection. Oh, now, wait a minute, my boy. That's much too public a proposal for me to say no to. I accept. Garland endured a lifelong battle with substance use and body image problems, the latter of which was propagated by studio executives. Garland would reportedly use amphetamines throughout filming to keep up with her hectic schedule and then take barbiturates to fall asleep, instigating a dangerous cycle of drug use that never really went away. Overdosing and dying before turning 50, she met a tragic end to a tragic life. I don't know what's, what's left in there <laughs> after that one. <laughs> Corey Feldman and Corey Haim. We're fighters for truth, justice, and the American way. Right. The two Corys were the biggest teen idols of their day, known for many 80s hits like Stand By Me and The Lost Boys, the latter of which starred both actors and started a lifelong friendship. Unfortunately, both suffered greatly throughout this tumultuous period. Feldman has been very vocal about the sexual abuse that both he and Haim suffered, and it resulted in a ferocious battle with substance use, including problems with heroin. What'd you do, man, when you saw that going down when I was 14 to me? What'd you do? You knew about it. Besides being his best friend, what'd you do? What'd you do? Feldman continues to be one of the biggest faces of Hollywood justice, even though he himself has been accused of sexual misconduct. As for Haim, he experienced housing insecurity before dying in 2010 at age 38. I have to be very careful with myself as far as that goes, which is why I have a support group around me consistently. He's addicted to life. Exactly. What were you addicted to? Uh, my addiction. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm addicted to my wife. Demi Lovato. I like to say that I'm an open book with boundaries because I feel like I do wear my heart on my sleeve, but I also have learned how to protect myself. Thanks to a meteoric rise on Disney Channel, Demi Lovato was a TV staple throughout her younger years. Unfortunately, her life behind the scenes was far from easy. Lovato suddenly left both her leading role on Sunny with a Chance and a concert tour in 2010. She ended up going to rehab to address her addictive behaviors and struggles with mental health in 2011. I was stuck in this like unhappy position and here I am sober and I'm thinking to myself, I'm six years sober, but I'm miserable. I'm even more miserable than I was when I was drinking. Why am I sober? After Lovato's day, she publicly talked about those issues and directly spoke about her difficulties with disordered eating. The singer went on to share more details in her music, a self-help memoir and in documentaries. Lovato's journey has had several bumps in the road. 
but she's always been honest about what it takes to start over. Arielle Winter. I think that when I was born, it was kind of already decided what I was expected to be, and so I was kind of pushed into the industry. While Arielle Winter was still working on the smash hit Modern Family, her sister Chanel Gray was making a case for why she should be the rising star's legal guardian. This publicized court battle led the actress to open up about her mother's bad behavior. Winter reported that she had strict rules about her diet, friendships, and even had to wear inappropriate clothes. So your sister has been really there for you and great for you, right? She's been the best part of my life. Yeah. She really is my best friend. She is the most important thing to me. She's been there for me through absolutely everything, and I, I just love her so much. I count on her more than anything. Apparently, these restrictions were meant to keep the star famous. Outside of Winter's turbulent relationship with her mother, she was also subjected to negative comments about her body. Winter has often talked about the power of body positivity and importance of taking care of one's mental health. We think Alex Dunphy would be proud. It was really painful for me to watch my mom go on news outlets and go on Dr. Phil and kind of spread things everywhere when it's really just private family business. Aaron Carter. When I turned 18 years old, I was just kind of standing there on my own trying to figure it out. And at that time, there was a lot of damage had been done. My parents were fighting each other in the media and stuff like that. And it, it just became, it became very difficult. The late Aaron Carter's financial struggles made tons of headlines over the years. According to the pop star, he constantly dealt with debt because his parents and managers took advantage. While coping with financial issues, Carter's mental health struggles and legal problems made it difficult to achieve the heights of fame he had as a child pop star. It's body shaming. It is the toughest thing to deal with. He once revealed that he hoped a stint on Dancing with the Stars in 2009 would help give him a career boost. When the run didn't give him the push he was hoping for, he turned to negative habits to help him cope. While working on a comeback, Carter tragically passed away in his home in 2022. At what point did you, you know that you had a problem and had to stop? I never really did. Someone step in? I mean, my mother stepped in. Cole Sprouse. Where'd he go? Nothing you can do will make me tell. Five bucks. Soccer practice. Some people start really early, and Cole Sprouse is one of them. He first started acting in Chuck Lorre's sitcom Grace Under Fire, which premiered on ABC in 1993. At the time, Sprouse was a whole one year old. You're the cutest little rug rat in the whole world. I love you and your brother and sister so much. Unfortunately, life in the entertainment industry had a terrible effect on his mother, and both he and his brother Dylan were taken away from her at a young age. Sprouse has also claimed that constantly working on movie and TV sets was a, quote, insular environment that made him, quote, forget what real human experience looked like. You are raised in such an insular environment that you, you forget what real human experience or boots on the ground actually looks like. Finally, he admits that he has lasting trauma from his time as a child star, but also admits that it's nothing compared to what his female co-workers have to deal with. That is so weird. Mara Wilson. Are you only four years old? Six and a half. You're four. Six and a half. If you were six and a half, you'd be in school already. I want to be in school. I told you I was supposed to start school in September. After starring in beloved 1990s family movies like Matilda, Mara Wilson took a step back from Hollywood in the 2000s. She would later pen several articles about her experiences in the 2010s. In one op-ed, Wilson used her firsthand experience to offer up the reasons why the odds are stacked so highly against child stars. Look, people love to talk about how immoral Hollywood is, but it's not. It's amoral. It's a numbers game. It's demographics. She also shared a detailed look at her childhood with a memoir, Where Am I Now? In the book, she wrote about being pressured to look and act certain ways to get cast and be accepted. Wilson also discussed how hard it was to read the inappropriate comments people made about her. Over the last decade, she has constantly voiced her support for other child stars who have faced adversity. For a long time, I, I, I kind of took a lot of the things that happened to me in stride, but I look back now and I think, wow, if that happened to any child that I, I know and care about, I don't know what I would do. Allison Stoner. Can I sit with you? I guess, but you have to give me your cake. We once again return to the Disney vault for Allison Stoner, who found success through Camp Rock and the sweet life of Zack and Cody, among many others. Unfortunately, Stoner experienced what seems like every negative aspect of the entertainment industry. Stoner has been very open about their traumatic experiences in Hollywood, including instances of sexual harassment, overwork, much of it illegal, and dangerous working conditions. 
Very few resources exist to help people unpack and navigate the implications of a child star studded culture, whether you're the kid, the parent, the agent, or the audience. They also claim that this resulted in chronic stress and eating disorders, which in turn led to malnourishment, hair loss, and even seizures. Luckily, they eventually sought help through therapy and now speak openly about the importance of mental health. Something I have learned is that as long as we are enchanted or complacent, we're also vulnerable. Drew Barrymore. Well, I had grown up very fast and it's not very normal to see a nine-year-old at a big Hollywood party. First rising to fame in E.T. the Extraterrestrial, Drew Barrymore's childhood was anything but ordinary. At a young age, she was often brought to clubs and venues geared for adults that she shouldn't have been able to get access to. I was a real wild child. And I just got so out of control that no one knew what to do with me. Barrymore later said her behavior got so erratic that she was sent to a facility to address her habits and mental health issues. The star later acknowledged that her experience there ultimately helped her turn things around. In the years since, Barrymore enjoyed a career resurgence and started hosting a successful talk show. On occasion, she will use her talk show platform to facilitate illuminating conversations about child stardom and teenage rebellion. I'm so glad that my kids won't be having to live on their own at 14. And that's as healing to the 14-year-old me as it can get. Macaulay Culkin. But in general, like, I never really liked being fussed over. Like, mm. I didn't like, you know, like, yeah, the hair, makeup, costume people, like, poking at you all the time and things like that. I actually wasn't a huge fan after a while of kind of, like, being the center of attention. Years after Macaulay Culkin blew up as a child star, he revealed how difficult it was for him behind the scenes. According to the actor, trying to balance normal activities like school with filming schedules made shoots feel more like a chore. I never read <sighs> any of the scripts. Like, wow. I, would, I would just read, like, the lines for, like, the next day or whatever. Like, I would, like, get the gist of what the movie was about. And, but then I just kind of show up and hit my marks, find my light. Culkin also had to accept whatever role was chosen for him. On top of the pressures of fame, he's been extremely honest about his rocky relationship with his parents. Culkin claimed that their focus on his earnings and career pushed his father in particular to mistreat him. Despite hitting a few rough patches, Culkin slowly started to make more Hollywood appearances in the late 2010s. Fortunately, Culkin's past difficulties have not kept him from a happy and productive career. Yeah, I was away from home a lot. I was away from school. I was just, I, I needed something else. I needed to grow and develop as a person. I was looking forward to high school. Like yeah. I was actually looking forward to going to school. And Raven Simone. Uh, things were just really controlled because you're in Hollywood, that's what happens. This child actress rose to fame on The Cosby Show, playing Denise's stepdaughter, Olivia Kendall. Her first episode aired in September 1989, when Raven Simone was just three years old. Jonathan, he's the worst. Whenever I look at him, he makes an ugly monster face like this. <laughs> this kick-started a career that was undeniably successful, but which had a negative impact on her mental health. Raven Simone claims that she was constantly body shamed and was often told, even as a very young child, that she was getting fat and that she needed to watch what she ate. She also claims that she was forced to hide her sexuality from the public, fearing that coming out would be detrimental to her career. As Raven Simone told People magazine in 2017, this all resulted in, quote, so many mental issues. Who says that's the only look? You make people feel bad if they don't look like that. No one looks like that. Miley Cyrus. I've become the face of a lot of things kind of against my will, I guess, from my opinions when you're someone in my position, your opinion becomes your identity. Miley Cyrus had no qualms about sharing the downsides of being in the public eye at a young age. After she put her breakout Hannah Montana role in the rearview mirror, the singer talked about her struggle to move on to more mature projects. Cyrus has spoken extensively about fans who want her to project the wholesome image she had when she was younger. There was a different level of like, hysteria when Hannah Montana, I mean, it was actually kind of crazy being Hannah Montana. Now I have a hard time remembering exactly what that felt like. Additionally, she's talked about the hectic schedule and pressure she had to dress a certain way. Cyrus even compared aspects of the experience to the notoriously exploitative TLC show Toddlers and Tiaras. Cyrus definitely deserves to get her flowers after withstanding all that pressure. I didn't hurt myself beyond repair in my experiences. I survived and I don't even mean heart still beating survival. I mean, I have a lot of people that love me around. Before we continue, 
be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Jeanette McCurdy. As a kid, you know, I'm surrounded by all these people who are my friends or my whatever, but they're all making money off, money of me. off of me. Yeah. Before Jeanette McCurdy even released her 2022 memoir, she grabbed the world's attention with its provocative title, I'm Glad My Mom Died. The book's contents dove into the horrifying details about the actress's strained relationship with her mother. McCurdy's mom pushed everything from dieting hard to constant Hollywood exposure. Experience. Some parents aren't good parents. Yes. They don't know how to do it. Yes, and to be able to say that out loud and I mean, people come up to me on the street and say, my mom's still alive, I can't say what you said, thanks for saying it. Yeah. It's so, it's so cool. This caused the actress to develop body image issues while feeling the pressure to constantly perform. Outside of talking about her family in the book, McCurdy also highlighted Nickelodeon producer Dan Schneider's troubling behavior. Her brave testimony became an acclaimed and much discussed bestseller. Whether the book leads to lasting change remains to be seen, but it was a landmark work that spoke volumes to McCurdy's resilience and bravery. It took me a long time to accept that my mom was not perfect, let alone abusive. Like it, it went in baby steps to, to put these pieces of the puzzle together. Check out these other clips from WatchMojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.